Hey, hello, hi. Yeah. Hi. hi everyone. So yeah, we have not so much time now. Uh, and uh, as far as I understood, we have uh, something like uh, uh, homework. Let's share, I will share the screen and we'll see. So we have this not actually homework. not actually a homework, but uh, this is a work for work for this uh, for this um, practice. So. Ah, okay. And um, I think we will scheme through this um, tasks. I will do like uh, the most basic versions of this task, but more complicated. Uh, you will do by yourself. Uh, but at least you will know uh, the main algorithm, the main idea behind them. So let's start. Uh, okay, first uh, I want to do, I will show you uh, how to um, actually draw the things that uh, yeah, draw by, by his hands uh, uh, on the screen. Uh, let's do it. And I will show also some, uh, also explain some things about, uh, oh no, I, I will do it later, but let's just do it right now. I will use function d, uh, db norm. Uh, well, I'll explain that later when we return to this function later, but as for now, uh, I will just use it without any, actually, uh, explanation. So uh, the first task we have a fair point is tossed seven times, find probability that uh, we obtain seven heads, we obtain zero heads and so on and so on. So, okay, we will use a function for binomial uh, distribution. Uh, and let's start with the first one. Uh, we need to set uh, x and size will be seven. And you will tell me what is the what probability we have there. Which probability we will use uh, for this task? Uh, sorry, do you have a link for this uh, tasks? Uh, I will share it. Any ideas, guys? I, I, I want to hear you. So what probability we will use there for the first task, for the first problem? Uh, no, no, I mean, yeah, probability can be uh, from uh, 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 zero to one. And we have a clue there that this coin is fair. And maybe you remember from the, uh, from the beginning of the, sem uh, of the lecture, uh, what fair coin, uh, fair coin means. Well, it means that the events are independent probably and that's well one side is not given preference over over the other side yeah it's not like coin that is uh, you know like somehow uh, deformed that uh, yeah and probability of uh, both sides uh, both sides is uh, 0.5 right exactly so that's why we'll use their um, probe equal 0.5. Uh, and we can plot it against uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So just to show you, uh, I think you remember that this, uh, this notation means that we want to create a vector from 0 to 7 with uh, step 1. And actually, uh, most of functions in R are vectorized. So if you apply some function on a vector, you receive a vector with the same uh, size. In this case, you get this uh, probability uh, for uh, each of outcomes. Like 
for zero, for one, for two, for three, for five, for six, for seven. And uh, you can plot it again, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you'll get this thing that you uh, then uh, that Ilya draw uh, several minutes ago. Uh, I even add some like um, uh, vertical line there. Uh, actually, it's also called lollipop plot because it's like uh, just lollipops on, on sticks, you know. Uh, let's check how it works. Actually, uh, I don't really work a lot with basic plot uh, in R because G plot is some much, well, it's not, well, yeah, I would say that it's much more uh, interesting and rich in terms of features, in terms of possibilities, but basic plot functions actually in R are pretty good and you can use them. So I will draw vertical lines for X, zero, it will be zero to seven. Group zero will be uh, zero. Y, uh, X one, yeah, X well, X one will be the same and Y one will be uh, this binom binom thing. If everything is correct, I will get yeah, I get this, uh, I get this uh, lollipop uh, figure. We can even uh, even replicate it with a, a different um, uh, with different uh, probabilities uh, with different sizes, and we can even create a function for that actually. Uh, so uh, maybe as you know, uh, R is a functional language, and functions are very important in R, and functions are even objects first objects so you can use functions inside inside of functions like as an object not like some results of the function and so on and you can create a list of functions for whatever you want and it's really helpful sometimes uh, so it's important to know how to create functions uh, for example we can create a function that will plot this figure uh, for uh, selected uh, selected uh, size and probability. And we will call it plot PDF, probability density function. Uh, for this, you can, you need to use a special word, word function. Actually function is a, a special word is actually is function too, but uh, you, you need to use it like that. So you can get uh, help for function function okay um, and how it works uh, in uh, circle brackets you put arguments for example uh, size and probability you can even uh, set some default values for some parameters for example 0 0.5 uh, means that uh, by default probability will be 0 0.5 but we can override it uh, if we use this function in practice. And in curve brackets, or you can do it without curve brackets if you have only just one line of code. Uh, in curve brackets, inside curve brackets, you calculate something. For example, uh, we'll put this. Sorry. Uh, functions uh, function create their own environment inside themselves, and it means that uh, like for from the function view, uh, it will have like some variables that are decided in this So uh, it will use the values that we send. Uh, to parameters, uh, to parameters size and probe. Uh, 
whatever this para uh, parameters will be. So we just use a set instead of seven here, size. Size, also here, also here. Okay, and for probability, yeah, instead of uh, 0 0.5, we have probe. Probe and probe. So now, uh, and actually, uh, like what you have for the last line in the function uh, uh, that goes like into console. Uh, if you use uh, if you create a function that will be return of your function so you use you can use like return function to, to that or if you do some plotting you just like do plot inside the function uh, and let's do it I think everything is correct for now uh, let's do it like um, that's yeah okay and now and now. Uh, now we can check it on, for example, size equal to uh, actually what was I think it was uh, we used twenty, right? I am not sure, but let's check, and we will get this thing. So if you were interested, uh, how this uh, like. Uh, uh, distribution will look like it will be actually it's something like that. So it's yeah, uh, Sebastiano. Oh, I was correct. I hope. I'm sorry. So yeah, Sebastiano was correct. Uh, it was not linear, or maybe not you was correct. Maybe I was correct. Uh, it has like this uh, form. Um, I will send you the script so you can try uh, it with different uh, probabilities, with different sizes. For example, you can set another uh, probability. So instead of 0 0.5, you will have, for example, unfair coin. And let's see how it change the result. So it will be not 0 0.5, but 0 0.6. So slightly like in favor for more our successes, uh, this coin will give us like results in 60% uh, of cases. And in case we have, uh, we have an experiment with 20 uh, coin tosses, uh, in theory, uh, distribution of the results, if we, uh, if we will do this, uh, experiments infinite number of times, it will look like that. So really rarely it will be uh, zero or 20, but most likely it will be 12 times. So yeah, it's quite logical. Uh, the most um, uh, copy everything you wrote in the chat. Okay, yeah, I can. Uh, so you can play it with it by yourself. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was just to show like how to create functions. Maybe we'll turn to it later. Uh, again, uh, working with functions is very important in R. It's a very big part of working in R. Uh, R is a functional uh, functional language and um basically it's really it's really i mean you can actually work in r without writing your own functions i think uh but it will really helps you many times for example when you feel that uh you copy paste many things or uh you have some very particular task that you can like call with some name, you can uh, write it as a function and it will really uh, 
will make your code better and easier to read. So now I can, uh, I'm not like copy pasted it several times the same code uh, uh, and with some change in some parameters, but I created a function and I know that, okay, this function will write, uh, will draw the distribution. It's, uh, it's uh, obvious from the name of this function. And then I just uh, try several parameters and it will, it will be easier both for me and for like uh, somebody who see my script. So for example, let's do it like seven equal seven, right? And 0 0.5. Okay. So let's return to our <laughs> original task because this picture is important to understand uh, what we have in the task actually. So a fair coin is tossed seven times. Find the probability that uh, we obtained seven heads. Uh, so uh, what, how to solve this task, like uh, using data from this picture? What will we be according to the picture? But do we really need a picture for this task all the time? No, it's just for you to make you understand, make your understanding better actually. So no, actually in your real life, you don't need it at all. Uh, you actually just use, uh, why there is a strange tautology size? Mm. Well, because here uh, size is a uh, name. So uh, here it means that I set a parameter size as a, uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, we can write it like that. Like uh, instead of size, you have S, S and so on. Uh, but I want to keep uh, uh, parameter names the same. Um, the logic uh, behind that, is that um, here inside uh, DB norm, there is a parameter size and probability. Uh, and this tautology just means uh, actually uh, that I want to care uh, to have the same uh, the same uh, parameter names uh, in uh, in my function that I will use uh, to, uh, to pass through the function dbnom. So that's why it seems tautological. But that's quite okay. I, I don't think there is a way to avoid it. Okay, I could use name like S and P, but and uh, it will be less tautological, but I, I don't like I mean, size and prop, I think is better name here. Okay, uh, no, uh, you don't need to uh, draw it every time just for your understanding how of the distribution action. Uh, in practice, you'll use like uh, functions that are pretty simple. And we can even do it right now, but uh, we'll postpone it a bit. Yeah. And two, for example, to really make sure we understand. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, because we don't have so much time, I just wanted to give you uh, a script that will draw you this picture, actually. But if you're interested, we can go. And that's no problem. So actually, and it's not super important for understanding actually, because it's not some crucial part about uh, statistics and so on. Just some plotting things. It just says that it draws uh, lines from uh, points x0, y0 to x1 and y1. And if you provide a vector for x0, y0, and so on, it will draw several lines. And actually, it draws uh, 
I wanted to draw it from uh, points uh, zero, one, two, three, four. For x, it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for uh, x, uh, one, it will be the same because I want this to be vertical. Uh, so this uh, they end in the same position uh, by uh, x axis. And for y, it starts from zero to this uh, probability from the function g binom. And about g binom function, I will tell you a bit later, I hope. We don't have so much time. Okay. Probabilities. Okay, okay. So let's uh, uh, return to the question. So uh, we have this picture. We have this picture. Uh, and uh, how to calculate based on this picture, uh, what is the uh, probability of having uh, seven coin heads, right? Seven heads. What is it like geometrically speaking? Any ideas? This is a, just an intersection uh, on the Y line. Because one, so oh, which line? Uh, intersection of uh, this seven results with uh, probability scale along the y line uh, okay so i mean this this part so yeah okay yeah 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 so uh it's actually the height of this uh vertical line on seven and if because, because our question is uh what is the probability of obtaining exactly seven heads if there's uh, this like uh uh height of this small thing in the end uh, for example, we have another task, like we obtained uh, six heads or more, it will be a uh, height of uh, this one and this one. So height of six and seven. Okay, yeah, it's in terms of the, like a uh, uh, picture, but we want to calculate it, right? Uh, and for, uh, in this case, let's do it uh please do it and uh, write uh in yeah just write in chat or you can write it uh, to me uh how to calculate it just uh, with calculator using r as calculator this probability of having uh seven uh, coin heads So the question is the first question, like a fair, uh, problem one, a fair coin is tossed seven times, find probability that we obtain seven heads. Uh, and to calculate it, you can use just a RS calculator. So you use like arithmetical uh, operators, like uh, division, power, multiplication, sum, and so on. So go ahead. Yeah, I received uh, one correct answer. And you can just calculate it and uh, see the result.
Uh, right, another correct result. Uh, maybe I didn't check yet, but yeah, it seems correct. Do we need some more time or we can continue to how to do it? Okay, I received one more correct answer. So uh, yeah, uh, to calculate it, you actually uh, seven heads is when you, uh, it means like you are lucky seven times, uh, seven times, right? So uh, probability of getting one head out of one is 0 0.5. Uh, probability to get two heads out of two is 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 and so on and so on. So you need to like uh, multiply uh, 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 six times. So actually you have, uh, or you can say like uh, it is 0 to 5 to the seventh degree. So 0 to 5 multiplied by 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 0 to 5 and multiplied by 0 to 5. Dot 5. Uh, yeah, I can uh, just uh, you know, write it even like that. So somebody answered me this way. Uh, but again, uh, when you copy paste something or write some routine, uh, it's something like a red flag that you need to be aware about that you need, maybe you you can somehow optimize it to make it simpler. In this case, it's not even about programming, it's about actually uh, arithmetic operation because uh, about mathematics, because uh, multiplication of the same number by many times, it's the same as using power actually. Uh, so yeah, 0 0.5 to the power seven. And this, if you, if you see the picture, uh, it, it's actually, it's actually, yeah, something uh, pretty similar because I think this line is something like almost one divided by f f uh, five from uh, that uh, part. So yeah, seems right. Uh, the same you can do actually for other tasks, but. Okay, let's do uh, a bit more complicated uh, that we obtain uh, seven heads or more. Let's calculate it by, uh, let's calculate this task. Do it please. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I received some results. Okay, so yeah, uh, to cal calculate, uh, calculate it, let's return to our picture. Uh, we need to calculate the probability of uh, getting uh, seven heads. We just calculated uh, uh, two minutes ago. And uh, we need to calculate uh, this probability. That can be a bit harder. Uh, okay. So, yeah, the first part is just 0 0.5 to the, to the power of 7. Uh, and plus, uh, in this case, uh, we have, uh, uh, we can consider it like this. Um, I will draw it here. Can use so what? Yeah. This one, this one. Okay, sorry. Uh, we'll go to, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's too good. Okay. Uh, right, right. Right, five, six, and seven. So imagine that uh, this gray means head, and actually the only one that is not head is this seventh one. But you can imagine that uh, this uh, seventh guy can be uh, like there are actually seven uh, options where this seventh guy uh, actually appears. It can be on the last position, it can be on the uh, sixth position. Sorry. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, move this way. Okay. Uh, and so on. So, uh, uh, Actually, uh, every uh, this position have the same uh, has the same probability. It's again zero dot five uh, to the degree seven to the seventh degree because it's the uh, fair coin. And actually, uh, like every uh, outcome uh, has the same probability uh, and multiplied it by seven because we have seven uh, like options where this uh, not head uh, appears okay okay uh, and we can even uh, Oh, we don't have so much time. Okay, um, so let me show you how to use uh, function RB, functions rbnom, dbnom, and pbnom. So I showed a bit uh, dbnom functions. That uh, that is the function that draws probability density function for the select number. So uh, actually. Uh, mm, let me show you another thing. Uh, pom, pom, pom. So for every distribution in R, uh, you have a family uh, of functions uh, with the same prefix, uh, with uh, different prefixes but with the same like uh, main uh, uh, part of the function. So for example, for binomial, fun uh, binomial, uh, binomial distribution, uh, you have uh, four functions, rbnom, dbnom, pbnom, and kubinom. And- uh, Sorry, Ivan. Sorry? Sorry, we still, we still see a picture with seven- uh, Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, circles. thanks for, thanks for that. Uh, okay, yeah distributions uh, and for uh, every uh, for binomial distribution you have 
for these four functions, arbinome, gibinome, pibinome, and cubinome. And for other dis distributions, you have the same four uh, functions. So we, we, like uh, with different prefixes, R, D, P, and Q. And let's consider them all actually. So what we used here, it's gibinome. It's a probability uh, density function or probability mass function for continuous distributions. Uh, uh, it actually just gives you a probability of obtaining uh, this specific result for the value. So uh, uh, the main parameter is x, and it's, for example, 7 uh, or 6, right? Let's start with the 7. Uh, and all other parameters are just some parameters of distribution. So, for example, size. So, actually, number of trials in the experiment, if you use uh, bi binomial uh, distribution. And probability, that is here, 0 0.5. And you get this probability of getting 7 heads out of 7 that we actually successfully calculated even without this function, just with a uh, calculator. Uh, the same you can do uh, for uh, six successes, right? Uh, or if you have, uh, if you apply vector, so instead of uh, six and seven, you use a vector from six to seven, so two values you get a vector of these probabilities. So uh, the first value in here is a probability of getting uh, six heads, exactly six heads, uh, uh, in a trial with, uh, with, a, with an, exper uh, an experiment with seven trials and uh, with probability of uh, having heads uh, 0 0.5. So, uh, and you uh, get a probability for uh, six heads for six success successes or uh, and for seven heads. So what you need to do here to calculate the probability of getting six or more heads from these numbers. Sorry, but uh, this, uh, the line uh, 17, uh, so what uh, did we do uh, in line 17 if we did not calculate the probability of six or more? Mm. So I thought that in the line 17, uh, we like did it. Yeah, yeah, we did it, but we can do it in many different ways. And that's the uh, thing. Okay. Because yeah, for simple cases, you can just calculate it by, by just uh, probability theory. Uh, but in more complicated cases, uh, it's actually, uh, it can be hard because, uh, well, for example, in your, in the case with, uh, uh, with real data, you have something like, uh, like um, 77 successes among uh, 220 trials or something like that and uh, calculate uh, there uh, just by this uh, probability theory uh, manipulations is a bit harder. So this way, we need some specific kind of functions. So in this case, yeah, we need to sum these two values uh, and you can just use a function sum and we'll get the same result as there, right? So yeah, it's the same, that's correct. But it's another way to calculate it. Uh, another function, another function is pbnom. So if gibinom is uh, what, get, uh, what will give you probability density function. Uh, so if you 
for example, apply vector from zero to seven, you get vector of probabilities. Uh, TD norm uh, is a function for cumulative distribution function. Uh, so let's try it uh, on some values and see how it works. PB norm, let's get uh, help for that. Yeah, for PB norm, we have functions. Okay, it doesn't matter. For example, we'll use seven, five, seven, probability. Can I ask what will be the formula to calculate? Um, for example, we obtained seven heads or less and not more. Seven heads or less? Yes. Well, uh, do you have an, I mean, you, you don't need to actually even calculate anything to answer uh, how, how to calculate seven heads or less. Because if you think about it, you will understand that actually there are no other possibilities than you can not have more than seven heads if you have seven trials. So it means that probability is basically what? No, no, I mean, answer please, it's, it's important. Seven heads or less. So it will be, it will be one. So if you seven heads or less, right? Uh, and we can even check it, it's important. It's important that we check that uh, this statistic stuff really works, that uh, it's not uh, created by uh, sanitars uh, to trick uh, shiz or something like that. Mm. Uh, seven or less, right? So mm -hmm. we get uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I will equal to seven and probability equal to zero to five. Let's check. Uh, we get this vector and we need to summate over this vector and we get one, exactly one. So it means that, yeah, we'll definitely get seven heads or less. I can bet on that everything for even like bad coefficients that we'll um, get seven heads or less. But okay, maybe like it's more, in another case, you have something more difficult. For example, you get like four heads or less, right? In this case, you calculate a uh, sum for the binome from four. Zero, one, two, three, four. And it will be this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. I see. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, for this, you don't even to even understand probability theory uh, from, from this point, because you uh, here you just need to understand how deep known function works. And even don't like you don't need to to, to be able to, to do it uh, analytically, but it's better that you do. But uh, for using uh, this function dbnom, you don't need to actually understand it. Uh, you can just use this function and okay, mm, from like like uh, uh, three heads or more. Okay, it's like three to seven. And I calculate, I get results. That's okay. Um, what is PV norm? PV norm is a cum cumulative distribution function. So actually, if you will use not binomial function, and will use other functions too. Uh, it will be uh, cumulative distribution functions for other distributions. Uh, but it will be the same like P norm or PT or PF or P beta or whatever name of distribution you, you will uh, use. Uh, in this case, it's a bit different. Uh, so it means uh, that uh, what is the probability to getting uh, 
as this or smaller value than what we've chosen. So uh, if we take seven here, it's like the same, like what is the probability of getting uh, seven heads or less? Uh, or remember we have this, like uh, we calculated there, what is the probability of having zero, uh, like four heads or less? And uh, we can calculate the same, but without, without uh, using gibinom function and sum function, but just by using pbnom function. And in this case, you just use pbnom and four. You see, it's just a bit simpler way, right? So that's exactly what uh, pbnom function uh, does. Um, do you understand it? Maybe it will be better if we draw it, if we draw it. Uh, actually, I, I will show you some magic that will uh, explode your brain. I know we are out of time, I'm sorry, uh, but I want to explode your brain with uh, uh, some crazy thing. Uh, like, remember I, sh I told you that, uh, uh, that uh, functions in R are the first order object and we'll uh, use it right now actually. So gist, uh, we will create another parameter gist fun that by, by default uh, is gbnom and we will use a function as a parameter and function. Right? Uh, it's something that if you think about it, maybe you will feel uncomfortable because it's really, it's really crazy thing for the first time you see this magic. But, it, but it's really, it really works. So it, now you can use uh, uh, actually I don't think that, no, it, it will work. I think it will work. Yeah, it will work. Uh, seven mod patch, and we'll use pbnom as a uh, list function. Do you understand? So we we can select a function that we'll use instead of list fun. And in this case, it will it means that we can use a pbnom function instead of dbnom. Uh, actually, just to show you uh, what uh, this uh, function gives you. So uh, this is a community uh, distribution and it means uh, what is the probability of getting uh, this result and lower. And it means that this function will be always non-decreasing. So it will be somewhat increases from zero to one. Right? Uh, so what is a, a frequency? Uh, uh, or what is the chance of getting uh, seven heads and lower? It's one. What is the chance of getting six heads and lower? It's almost one and so on. And maybe, maybe you're interested also in what is what are other functions for. Uh, I will just uh, quickly show you these other functions. Who you know is the least important, I think. It's uh, also uh, 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 called reverse function or it's just reverse for pbnom function. So like who, is reversed for P, uh, uh, could be known, uh, is reversed function for cumulative distribution function. So if cumulative distribution function uh, gives you a probability of getting uh, some re uh, results and lower, uh, could distribution uh, will take probability values and uh, get uh, this values as a result. So, for example, if you get uh, this 
value uh, and everything will be the same. Yeah. You will get a, a like a, what value will you get with this probability uh, of getting uh, some value in lower? But it doesn't matter. So, but just if you're interested, what this Q stands for? It's quantile function. You can uh, read about that uh, more. Uh, but the last function, R binom, is very important. It's very important, uh, and uh, it's quite from this Q P D binom function because it will gener generate you some values from the random distribution. I mean, some random values from the given distribution, sorry. And this, in this case, you get like a number of experiments uh, that you try to simulate. For example, you want to, uh, let's say, uh, toss a coin uh, 20 times and record uh number of successes and you want to repeat this experiment 100 times so 100 times you want to toss 20 coins and re report the result uh in terms of writing a function there writing a code it will be uh n equal to 100 uh size equal to uh 20 and P, as usual, will set as 0 to 5. And you get this vector of length 100. We get 100 uh, results of simulation uh, of this experiment when you uh, toss a coin 20 times, toss a fair coin 20 times. Uh, you can see that maybe your uh, result is different. So do you have the different result? Or do you have the same result? I have different. Yeah, exactly, because it's random numbers. But there is one important thing about random numbers in computers. Uh, I'm sorry, but they're not random, actually. They're pseudo-random. Uh, what does it mean and why? Actually, if you uh, read articles, uh, you maybe uh, saw something like, uh, for example, if you read some experimental articles and um, like uh, subjects are um, like uh, they are distributed between two groups or several groups, uh, uh, that uh, you can see that. Uh, mm, uh, like a sequence of uh, stimuli or groups were randomized using a uh, pseudo uh, random uh, uh, generator. Have you seen that before in scientific articles? Just press plus if you if you saw that. Just write minus if you if you haven't. Okay, minus, minus, minus. Okay, okay. But if you, I mean, if you uh, do some like, uh, uh, especially if you have some like experimental background, some from, from some experimental science, uh, you, you can, uh, find it in uh, method par method sparks uh, that like, uh, that was this randomization was conducted using pseudo random uh, generator uh, pseudo random number numbers generator and you could like think why the pseudo random uh, because actually like true randomness is a uh, quite uh, difficult and we don't really needed so much in practice. Uh, so actually, 
uh, when you try to do uh, Tom? Mm, yeah. I've heard some information uh, that uh, like to create uh, like for the passwords or for something like that they use like isotopes uh, and this uh, yes so you can read about it and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This, I saw like, like uh, this, uh, you know, this lamps with some uh, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they are used yeah. also too. So Pl plasma, uh, plasma. it's actually a difficult question, like whether uh, actually even these things are like truly. Uh, and in in practice, uh, what is used is something like it's. I mean, it's really oversimplification. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's something like uh, um, taking uh, like a number pi uh, and taking uh, uh, just a number after some uh, point in this uh, pi number, right? Uh, and yeah, uh, so it's actually some sequences of numbers that if you correlate them, if you try to find difference between some numbers and average, there will be there will be no connection or association between them, uh, and it was like proven experimentally somewhat. But it's very hard to prove that these uh, sequences are in theory uh, has no connection. But it doesn't matter because in practice they are. Uh, so actually, all these numbers are not really random. And there is a one fun, fun way and quite important way to, to actually show it is using seeds. Uh, it's actually, if we like use this metaphor, it's not how it really works, uh, how it really works, uh, but I think it's a good met metaphor that uh, you can use it, uh, uh, you can take random numbers as uh, numbers in uh, uh, after some point in p in pi number uh, imagine you can select uh what is a position where uh, where you start take uh random numbers from number pi uh and let's use for example set seed one or like let's see 10 and it will say that we will take it from one point well from point like 10, so 10th number after the dot and number pi, somewhat, somewhat. And now let's gener uh, let's run this line and let's, uh, okay, let's, uh, now let's uh, run this R binom uh, uh, line again and see what we get. And I'm pretty sure that if you run this line and then you run this line too, your random numbers will be the same as mine. So try to do it by yourself and uh, tell me the result. Yeah, they are. And they are yeah. So they're not random. That is yeah, like... yeah, they're not random. But in practice, it doesn't matter because, well, for example, if you take, uh, I don't know, two uh, sequence of, uh, well, many sequences and you will try to correlate them, in general, they will not correlate, you know, like, uh, so they are practically random, but uh, they're not truly random, so. Uh, that's why you can use the seed uh, and after running this line with seed and if you use the same seed number uh, we'll get the same result and for example even on my computer if i run the same seed line again set seed 10 again i will get the same number or the same sequence of random numbers again right uh, I can, if I run it again, I will get another sequence because I already started, moved from the original seed for now. But again, if I run uh, set seed again, I will get 10, 9, 10, and so on. 
Yeah. Um, and what also interesting that let's do it. Uh, let's generate many, many sequences. Let's say 2000, no, no 10,000. Yeah, I think it will be enough. And uh, what we used, we used seven, right? 0 0.5 and save it to some Uh, vector, so it will be a very long vector. Rent binom, let's say, and we can uh, draw a histogram of this uh, vector, and we actually will get something like what we have. Uh, actually, in this case, I would like to do. Uh, something like that. I will use maybe binom. Yeah, and I will use it like that. I will plot 0 0.7 to this table. Or maybe even I will try to plot this table. Maybe it will work. I don't like the function table. Yeah, it works, but I don't like function table because actually function table uh, creates a uh, object of class table that is, I mean, it's quite unusual for R in general. I don't like that it's a specific uh, class with specific ways to work with it. Uh, it's uh, somewhat against the logic of R, I think. Uh, okay. So you can get actually something very close to what we had uh, with uh, dbnom function, right? But that was uh, obtained well, you can say experimental, you know. Uh, so uh, we uh, sampled many times from this distribution values, and then we plotted uh, like many counts of them. It was it, it will not perfectly uh, follow the distribution, but with more uh, samples, with more experiments, you will be closer and closer to the original shape. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think we are a bit, I'm sorry. Where is it? Ah, yeah, it's here. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, the last thing that I want to show that I think is super important uh, and I'm it's very important to show you is using also function binom test. Uh, and actually it's a bit more than just binom test because uh, you, uh, you already know that this uh, binom function, uh, a function for binomial distribution or and even for other distributions are built in in R. So they uh, integrated in base R. You don't need to use any additional language, uh, in the, any additional packages uh, for that. Uh, and it's quite logical because actually R was developed for statistical calculations. Uh, but also uh, statistical tests function also built in and there are even special uh, classes for them, and they're somewhat similar. So for statistical tests, uh, uh, there are functions like something dot test, and here you uh, select select uh, uh, some value, some parameters of uh, distribution. For example, seven p equal to dot five, and our alternative is that uh, uh, we have more than six heads, right? So we'll say, we'll say greater, or we could say less. Uh, 
Yep. And actually, we will get the same results, but with one more <laughs> another way. Uh, so we have this p value like zero zero six two five. Uh, what is important about this binom test and uh, um, other uh, test functions that uh, it actually creates a very specific object. Let's say let's save this result to some uh, uh, variable. We'll call it num six seven whatever. I'm sorry. Uh, and actually, uh, this uh, object is of class, is of special class for uh, testing, that's called htest. And with a function str that we use to uh, explore lists, you can see how it actually, what's actually inside this uh, object. So actually, actually, uh, this binom x7 object, so htest object, uh, object of class uh, htest, is basically is just a list, a list named list with some uh, values inside and some also additional uh, attributes. And important additional attribute is attribute class, that is htest. So actually, that's uh, how. Uh, the basic uh, object-oriented programming uh, called S3 classes uh, works in R. Uh, so it's just basically a list or a vector with some additional attributes and one of them is uh, a specific class or vector of classes. And for uh, actually uh, also for, for the class you can create a uh, methods, so some uh, special variants of functions, let's say, uh, and uh, if uh, the function says uh, sees that uh, it's an uh, uh, object htest, it's okay, whether I have a, a special uh, method for uh, htest, and if it has, it use this version uh, of function. So, for example, uh, if we uh, want to print it to console, or actually what we have if you just uh, use, uh, like if you get result to console, uh, like even without print, uh, we get the specific uh, printing, uh, printing based on the values inside this uh, object that is a basic list. So uh, why actually you need to know this? Actually, you can live without it. But if you know that it is a list, uh, you can uh, use it for your, uh, for your own good. Uh, for example, by using this dollar sign that we use to uh, subset lists. And for example, extract p value just by its name. So just use binom six seven dollar p value. So this way, for example, you can get, uh, for example, you can extract p values from for simulations, for example. So you can repeat the test several times. Uh, on simulated values and get p, many p, vector of p values using this uh, subsetting. Or you can use actually other uh, things from uh, other data from the test. For example, estimate in the uh, estimate of uh, uh, parameters in, in the test and so on. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think uh, we are uh, out of time, but I don't know. Maybe you have any other questions because we, we cannot, like, we couldn't actually do everything 
but I, I, I think it was important to show you some uh, interesting things, like theoretical things. Maybe you have questions and I can answer them. Yep. Questions? Mm -hmm. This file, uh, it is our uh, homework, or it is like uh, a notes uh, of the class, like what we will do in the class in the future. Or what is this uh, GitHub uh, page? Uh, yeah, I think it is a it is a homework, but yeah, um, actually, I thought that this is your. It's something that you uh, do during seminar. And if you if we out of time, you like you need to do it by yourself. Everything else, so that's why I try to cover as much as possible during the seminar, and that's why we are a bit out of time. But for for in terms of uh, like grades and so on, uh, it's better to ask uh, Ilya about that. So I like grade it and. How they graded if they are and so on. So, do we have any questions on R statistics and uh, all other things? Or well, maybe you can see some things that uh, you feel that it will be problematic and you want to discuss. I have one more question about uh, materials. So um, you uh, showed us um, uh, while discussing uh, binums like uh, R binum, P binum, mm -hmm. etc. You showed us uh, like it was your GitHub page uh, or what it was like, where it was like written like in the uh, manual, like in the uh... student's book. Yeah, uh, I have some manual. It's uh, in Russian. It was for another course. Uh, I will I will slowly try to, to translate it to English, but uh, it's actually a long process, and uh, I'm not sure that I will uh, I will be in time for uh, translation. That uh, also, these materials have uh, a bit different structure uh, compared to uh, the structure of the course. Uh, and about uh, these functions uh, that I showed you in the picture, uh, actually uh, this was copy, uh, copied from uh, cheat sheet for R. Uh, R cheat sheet, I will show you. So cheat sheet, do you know what is cheat sheet? So it's something like uh, for many programming languages you can find some like uh, uh, very short uh, pages that you can print, for example, and uh, have around your table, uh, or just uh, use it to open, download it and open it. Uh, and let me show you this one is, yeah, it's here. Uh, and you can here find actually all almost all basic stuff that we discussed previously, like about data frames, list matrices, uh, selecting vector elements, by addition, by value, name vectors, and so on and so on. So actually it's helpful, uh, especially when you start working with R, especially this one. And I can send you a link so you can see about this distributions. I just copied it from here. And I can send you the link, right? Uh -huh. So it's here. And you can download it, you can print it, or just open and uh, see for help, check for help. It, uh yeah also you have some uh chat sheets that you can download from uh r studio uh well actually we didn't work 
we haven't worked uh, with dplyr yet with pour and replot and so on uh, but what can be helpful for you is RStudio IDE cheat sheet. So it's a, a cheat sheet with some like different uh, like tabs and buttons in uh, RStudio. You can find it helpful too, actually. But I think it's too complicated. Uh, but maybe you'll find something uh, that will be useful for you. So for offline classes, for example, uh, sometimes I just print it and uh, for every table, uh, for every students to, to, to make sure that they uh, can reference them. Okay. Um, yep, any other questions? Okay, yeah, I understand you. you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 40 minutes out of time, I understand. I am I'm sorry. But yeah, I think you're tired. So yeah, it's time to go. So, okay. So, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>